What's going on everyone? This is Metro North Rail Fan 224 here and today I feel like I'm bored so I might as well do a review of one of my uh, laptops and yes I'm not just a rail fan I am also into computers as well. So I figured I might as well start one of my overviews of this one and then in a separate video I will go over the rest. Maybe I might do those in separate videos maybe I might not but we'll see. Um, this is the Lenovo ThinkPad L390. It's a 13-inch laptop, uh, given the 3 in the L390. And we're going to go ahead and put it through its paces here in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, without further ado, let's uh, go over the specs and see what we got. I already know the specs, so you guys don't, so I will show them to you. Okay, I'm in Task Manager right now, and as you can see, it's got an Intel Core i5-8265U. This is a quad-core processor, as you can see right here. Um, it's got eight threads, and the previous generation, the seventh generation, of Intel Core processors were dual core with four threads. So this is definitely a big improvement. 12 gigabytes of RAM, this initially came with eight, but I installed 16 gigs of RAM, meaning another uh, eight gig stick. I installed that and then I got a Dell Inspiron, which I'm gonna review in a separate video. I got that, which has the same type of RAM. Both take DDR4 2400 megahertz RAM as you can see right there in the task manager. So what I did was I took the four gig stick out of the Inspiron and put it in here. And then I took the eight gig stick that I bought a while back and put that in the Inspiron, which again, I will uh, review that in a separate video. Um, we've got 128 gigs of uh, solid state storage. This is, um, I want to say this is M2 SATA. I know it's an M.2 drive, but I'm not sure if it's SATA or NVMe. It's probably SATA because when I took this apart to uh, take a look at the SSD, I saw uh, two notches, which probably indicates to me that it's SATA. And we've got the Intel UHD Graphics 620, which isn't the fastest uh, integrated processor in the world, but it's definitely better than nothing. In my opinion, the AMD ones are faster than the Intel versions. And of course, like I said, it's got that Core i5, see, Core i5 8th gen. And the display is a 13.3-inch. Uh, uh, it's a 13-inch uh Ultrabook, nonetheless. Um, it's uh, 1920 by 1080, and the viewing angles are pretty good because it is an IPS display. So the th angles of the of the uh, display, no matter how you're looking at it, are pretty good. And of course, as you saw, I was able to touch the screen because, come on. Yep, it's a touch screen, as you can see right here. So yeah, um... That's all there is to say about the hardware. So let's take a look at the ports. We've got uh, two USB type C's. I don't know if both support charging because I'm not gonna take a risk, but this one does support charging because as you can see by the LED, this one is another USB type C port for other peripherals. Uh, USB three, which this one supports uh, charging even when the computer is off. And this is the HDMI port and on the other side, We've got the power button, a uh, USB 3 jack, and this port right here is a uh, proprietary Lenovo port for Ethernet adapters. And this is the micro SD card slot and the headphone jack. Um, so yeah, I do like the build quality. It is metal, so pretty durable. And that's it for the hardware. So let's see uh, how it performs in Train Simulator. Since I'm a rail fan, I do play uh, games relating to trains, like Train Simulator, for example, and I will show you what my favorite locomotive is to drive. So um, let's go ahead and hit drive here. I'm gonna turn up the volume so you guys can hear it better. 
I don't want to turn it up too loud. Oh, I accidentally muted the microphone on the computer, but I'm recording from my phone, so it doesn't matter. Come on. There it goes. Sorry, it can be a little uh, slow, so I apologize. All right, so <clears throat> once this loads up, um, I will show you what locomotive I'm driving. And you may think it's weird for this one because the locomotive that I have attached does not have HEP. But I still have it attached anyway because it's like one of my favorite locomotives of all time hooked up to an Amtrak train. And it's literally the most realistic looking locomotive in Train Simulator. So let me just point it over in that direction because that's where I'm going to get on the train that I'm going to get on. So let's get on it. Here it is. The Canadian Pacific AC4400 by Searchlight Simulations. And I'm not going to lie, this is really impressive. I actually love how realistic it is. It's got realistic 7 FDL 16 prime mover sounds and the bell and the horn are pretty realistic too. This is a great locomotive. I wish uh, DTG uh, made their locomotives like this. All right, so of course on the touchscreen, that it, it, this is a touchscreen, but it doesn't support touch, but I can always uh, double tap to put in the reverser and then hit W, release the independent brake. And of course I'm gonna go over to the integrated function display and put that in. Well, you know, uh, put in my locomotive monitor and then we'll set up the rest of the train. And yes, you can actually shut down this locomotive and like, you know, start it. Cause as you can see, there's no uh, key uh, icon right there. So you are able to, um, you are able to go outside. Well, kind of like in Train Sim World, Although in Train Sim World, you can just simply uh, hit the button at the back panel, but this locomotive does not have that. Since uh, this is a, a locomotive uh, that's more, the, the most realistic. The one in um, Train Sim World and Train Sim World 2 is kind of unrealistic in my opinion, but now I want to say this is like literally the most realistic one that's currently available for uh, Train Simulator 2020. This is pretty solid, because like, you know, you can actually interact with the integrated function displays. The prime mover sounds are real. They're not like, you know, they're, they actually put like five years into research, by the way, Searchlight Simulations did. They put five years of research into this locomotive and they definitely worked hard. And I'm not gonna lie, this locomotive actually performs on this locomotive pr pretty well. But of course, what I, up oh, you can hear the air compressor now. Even the air compressor sounds are real. And if you can, uh, you can actually go back here, open the cab door, and then come out here to actually start it. I mean, of course, the locomotive is running right now, but you can actually open this and uh, get into the engine compartment. This is why I love this locomotive so much. See, you can get in there to start it like you would in real life. Of course, let's uh, shut that back up. Oh, <laughs> what am I saying? I meant like, you know, button that up. Shut that. And let's get back into the, nope. That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, let's get back into the seat. Is my gen field on? Yeah, my generator field is on. So let's go ahead and take this for a drive. And like I said, the uh, prime mover sounds are authentic, so. 
so they definitely uh, put a lot of dedication into this. And if you're wondering what I'm doing with the 2D map, I'm just um, making sure the train goes into the direction that I want. Did I say the traction motors were authentic? I, th I think I did, if I remember correctly. I'm not so sure, though. But here we are. It sounds just like a real CSX AC44. I mean, this is Canadian Pacific, not CSX, but I'm, I'm definitely loving it here. So yeah, I love it. Very high quality. So yeah, and you can see why I was I said that I was being crazy earlier. Um, putting uh, super liners on a P42. I I'm sorry, this is... I meant an AC44. I'm sorry, guys. I meant an AC44. I was thinking P42 because those are Amtrak cars. Um... But yeah, these are pulling super liners, even though they don't have HEP, but that doesn't matter because this is train simulator, so things don't have to make sense. So yeah, I love it. And of course, I follow uh, Searchlight Simulations on Facebook. I mean, I don't have a Facebook account, but... I do, oh, there goes the uh, alerter. I should probably, yep, there it goes. I should probably uh, get back into the cab so that way I, I don't have the train going to penalty break. But yeah, um, I do uh, check on the Searchlight Simulations uh, Facebook feed to see what updates are available. And back in February, um, they said that they're working on the BNSF version of this locomotive. There's currently no ETA, but they said they would keep us posted. So yeah, until then, we've got, we at least have this locomotive. I mean, look at the bright side. It's better than nothing. <laughs> I love that air compressor sound. That's, that's why I'm a big fan of GE. I mean, EMDs are okay, but I'm more of that GE kind of guy. Like, I mean, especially the Genesis P42, because, you know, the, um... And of course, whenever I heard... This Prime Mover, I mean, this is a GE7 FDL-16, but um, when I first heard the uh, sound that sounded like a P-42 on a freight locomotive, I thought that was interesting. I thought that was interesting because, of course, like, you know, in order to be able to make that sound, you have to put it, like, into Notch 3, like I just did make it sound like a P42, but of course this doesn't have HEP, so it's not going to stay at 900 RPMs. But I just love how it sounds just like a P42. I mean, I just love all the FDL engines that GE used to make. I mean, GVOs are okay, but... But I'm more of a fan of the uh, 7 FDL engines because I can definitely relate them to the Genesis. So yeah. All right, well, I think that's going to do it for me in this video. So I'm going to sign off here, and I will catch you guys up in the next one. Thanks for watching.